we had came in and it really um, backed up our operation and caused an even worse problem that we've had. And I know my manager spoke with the Munster Police Department several times. Uh, their assistance out there last week was very helpful and we, we really appreciate that. And then, uh, you know, I, I spoke to Mr. Dustin Anderson a couple of times last week and also let him know some of the actions we've been taking. So, um, as met Mr. Vanderwood said, we, we secured a new one acre lot in Lansing and we also hired two full-time spotters to drive uh, empty equipment um, over to that site to help to help alleviate some of the uh, some of the flow and uh, some of the trailers that we had um, parked there. Um, I, I would never want to make this about money because it's it's about fixing the problem. But but I would like to note that you know we are we are investing in this property and we are investing to try and uh, and take care of the problem. Um, some of the other things that that we're doing. So on March eighth, we are moving sixteen percent of the business. Um, that's the entire state of Michigan that we currently serve out of the Munster facility. Uh, we're going to move that and have that be served out of Louisville, Kentucky warehouse. Uh, we're in the process now of notifying it's between four and 500 customers that uh, we have to notify that they're going to be served out of Louisville as opposed to Munster. Uh, so that should help cut down on the amount of uh, truck traffic back there. Um, and then on March 2nd, we, uh, we are standing up our first full-time weekend shift permanently so that we can start moving some of the appointments during the week um, and getting them out of Monday through Friday and start taking some appointments on Saturdays and Sundays um, to also alleviate some of the truck traffic back there. Um, that's another one where, you know, we're investing in, in the site to try to, try to help the problem out um, by standing up that second shift. Uh, we've also notified our carriers and we're putting in our electronic tenders that idling on the street there uh, is going to be strictly enforced by the Munster PD. And if they stay on the street, they will be ticketed. Um, we also gave them several truck stops that are near to the building that they can go if they're early or if we can't take them at the time. And uh, additionally, we're, we're in preliminary talks now to secure an additional one acre lot um, also in Lansing to store some more trailers. Um, we still feel that the driveway expansion is needed and will help the situation. Um, it'll help us with the flow in and out of the building uh, with the trucks, but uh, also wanted to just update the board on some of the other actions that, uh, that we've been taking. Thank you very much. Yes, sir. Um, at this point, I, what I think before I entertain any comments from the BZA, I think we'll open it up first for public hearing. Um, are there, is there anybody from the public that wishes to speak on this matter? Uh, I don't know who all is on the phone right now, but yes, I would like to. Uh, Mr. Manta, would you please identify yourself, your name and address for the BZA before you speak? Sure. My name is John Manta. It's M-A-N-T-A. -A. Um, Vice President for BMWC Constructors, which is located at uh, 420 Superior Avenue in Munster. Uh, across the street from the GE facility. Um, and uh, I have not spoken to this group before. So uh, what I'd like to say is a couple things. One is, um, you know, GE has you know, been a good neighbor and we try and be good neighbors with each other. But there's no question that with the increased truck traffic on Superior Avenue, somebody from our office, if not multiple people from our office, is probably calling you, the office, the Munster, town of Munster's office or the police department almost every day, certainly every week because of the safety hazards that are going on right now in Superior. Um, it's oftentimes happens that one of us has been calling and somebody else is calling. Tonight when I left the office, um, there was probably half a dozen trailers parked in the cul-de-sac, uh, 10 or 12 trucks parked along there. The uh, the fellow who drives the the tractor who jockeys trailers around there um, with the ice and the snow, it's been really treacherous. It was a, a time when I was driving down Superior when there's there's that kind of cut through by the hospital now where people can cut from the street to our street. And when the trucks are lined up there, I've seen a couple of times, one time in particular, when a little vehicle was coming out of that hospital and couldn't see because there were trucks parked on both sides um, and screeched the brakes on when the semi slammed the brakes on. Um, so it's a very dangerous situation. We've contacted GE many times, um, and it hasn't really, I understand what Mr. Gokit said, and I appreciate all the things he's talking about, 
Um, but so far we've seen zero improvement. Um, they say they've got monitors in the offices and things like that. Um, one of the truck drivers uh, backed into our property. We've had several trucks back into our property, knocked over our flagpole. Uh, we tried to get someone to help us repair it. Um, GE was not willing to do that. Um, we're, we're talking about possibly having to put a gate in now at our own expense to keep the truck drivers off. The response we get from GE is that, well, the truck drivers are independent truck drivers. They're not theirs. I don't know how long ago it was that they built at the end of Superior the gravel lot there to take off some of the uh, the stress of the trucks, of the, of the traffic. Really hasn't made a difference. And the other part is also that because of all the trucks parking on the street and parking overnight and staying there, a lot of the drivers are working on their trucks. Um, so now the street in front of our property um, is, is there's many, many, many oil spots on the street that someone's going to need to get cleaned up at some point. So we are, as a company, we're, I want to say we're supportive of allowing GE to do this, to, to expand their driveway, but we'd like there to be some, some contingency or something. And I'm not sure what everybody is allowed to do, but that doesn't, that stops them from bringing more trucks in. If it's going to make it better and safer for everybody, that's great. But it doesn't sound like what they're, if what they're doing is necessarily going to slow down the, the amount of traffic. Um, so we're very concerned and, and we haven't gotten a lot of support when we've gone and tried to be a good neighbor. Um, I hope that all makes sense and I apologize for rambling. That's okay. Um, does a petitioner wish to respond to these comments? Uh, I can't speak to, to tonight and uh, the trailers that were on there. I, I know I was up there uh, last Tuesday through Thursday and once we got that lot in Lansing up, uh, I noticed, you know, that it, it appeared to be better um, during the day um, in terms of, um, you know, the the, the non-response to uh, to issues or whatever. You know, I, I sincerely apologize for that. I, that's, I, I had not heard um, of, of contact with them. So I, I'll, I'll speak to my on-site general manager and uh, let him know that, you know, if things like that come up, you know, he, he needs to pass them back to our headquarters so that we can address them um, just so we can make sure that, that voices are heard and we're good neighbors and, and we're talking through that. So I, I do apologize for um, any non-response um, to, to different different incidents. Um, I will say, you know, I, I think some of the actions that we're taking, like the moving uh, all of our customers in Michigan uh, to be served out of Louisville will help uh, just cut down on the traffic and then you know, once we get the weekend shift um, established and with this lot in Lansing and potentially a second lot, I, I am hopeful that those actions along with uh, better flow in and out of the facility with the driveway, um, we would see some, some actual change uh, in the truck traffic. Okay, uh, is there anybody else in the public that wishes to speak in this matter? Mr. Friedman, if I could say one more thing, I just wanna, I wanna, I wanna say thank you to the Munster Police Department and thank you to your office for letting us speak. But the Munster Police Department has been very helpful whenever we call and, and they're concerned and, they've, and, and they're have and and they they're on the spot whenever we call. And so I don't want it to make it sound like that they've not been helpful. Well, I thank you for that. This is a public hearing and you're entitled to speak. So you there's no problem. And obviously I'm very sympathetic to your situation. You have a business to operate and you've had a lot of problems. And we've had a lot of complaints and we've had a lot of discussion about this continuing issue. Um, at this matter, since there is no me other members of the public to speak, I would close the public hearing portion of it and I will bring it back to the BZA. Would any member of the BZA like to ask any questions concerning this? I, uh, Mr. Chairman, I just had a question. Um, how, probably for uh, Mr. Wickland. So whatever um, motion action that we would take, um, is, there a, is there a way to um, word it so that it's, it's contingent on them um, keeping these, you know, these, these lots that they've, that sounds like they've acquired or rented um, off-site 
that they that they keep them and not um, abandon them, you know, three months down the road. I, I guess I'm just trying to formulate how we can protect ourselves. Yes, it, uh, you can attach uh, conditions. Uh, the problem is policing those conditions. You know, what, what do you do if you, if you can't have somebody out there uh, all the time? But it sounds to me, though, like the petitioner here is making uh, a considerable effort uh, to, uh, uh, to comply. Um, but yes, you can attach conditions. Tom, any thoughts on uh, some conditions that might be attached that would help here? No, you know, Dave, I think you put your, you know, put your finger on it. It would be difficult for us to, um, as a condition of this particular variance, um, require that they maintain those lots because, um, you know, our recourse, if they didn't, would be to suspend the variance, maybe, and then uh, force them to, to modify the, the driveway back to a compliant, code compliant uh, driveway. I'm not sure it would, we'd be able to do that. Um, I guess we could find them for not complying with the conditions of the variance, but I think it'd be a difficult thing to administer. Um, I think that, you know, the, the, the actions that they've taken that Mr. Goki kind of went through um, while they are connected to the variance, I think they were sort of independent of it as well. So I think that there's other avenues that the town is pursuing and that GE is responding appropriately to, um, to kind of try to fix the situation. So I think this is just one piece of it. I don't know if it'll solve, like I said, if it'll solve the problem entirely, but I think this in conjunction with some of those other actions that they're taking and the involvement of other, um, Departments from the town, including the police department and the town manager's office, has uh, you know I think moved them in the right direction. So I think we're heading in the right direction. I think if it if it became a problem again, then we would you know we'd go back to those other ways of uh, providing or putting pressure on them to fix the situation. So okay, so Mr. Wickland and Tom, I have questions for both of you. So if we We've heard continuous testimony this time and other hearings that there's a multitude of extra trucks being parked along the side and that interferes with safety in the hospital over there and BMW and, and all of these issues. So the question is that at this point in time, has the number of trucks parked outside decreased in the last four or five weeks or have they not until all of these measures have been put, put together? That's what I'm trying to figure out. I would I would say that as of last week, uh, the problem was pretty intense, and that had to do with the weather. And as Mr. Goki mentioned, they, there was kind of a backlog of trucks; they weren't getting through, and then they all sort of arrived early last week. Now, once that occurred and that problem became known to the town, that's when the town. Police Department and the Town Manager's Office intervened and um, worked with GE to, um, you know, get them to acquire these other lots um, for storage. All the actions that that Mr. Goki kind of went through that all took place really like last week. So, okay, uh, I haven't been out there this week to verify if. You know, things are moving a little more fluidly. Um, and if the, the congestion has been relieved, but as I said, so, I think that this is an opportunity for, for us to allow them to, to take, to make an effort along with some of these other things to make the situation better. So, um, so the question that I have is that, you know, is this a one way street? If we, if we allow the variants and allow them to expand the driveway and to do all of the things that they want to do. And then uh, eight weeks from now, 10 weeks from now, you know, I realize weather may not be a factor then. If we still see the problem with the trucks standing outside and whatever, do we have the ability to suspend the variants at that time? Uh, that's what I'm trying to understand. Mr. Wicklin, can you shed some light on that? 
Yeah, I can try because I, I don't think you can do that. You, you attach conditions. If they don't uh, comply with the conditions, then you can take steps to, to shut them down, uh, I think. The, uh, the, the problem is, is very difficult because, of course, you're, you're talking about Lansing. You're talking about a lot in Illinois over which we have no jurisdiction. So um, uh, it, it's a tough call, uh, Stuart. The, the thing that I would add, though, and I think Tom touched on it, and that is uh, this new, or rather these new variances, if these variances are granted, uh, the, the situation will get better, or at least uh, all the engineering and, and the architectural people say that it will be better. So if you go back to the, to the old uh, lot, uh, you're not gaining anything. Uh, in fact, you're, you're, you're losing. So uh, this, this, as I understand it uh, from all the people in the know, will help things. Uh, it, it will make things better uh, than they were before. Does that help, Stuart? Well, you know, I understand. And certainly if they're not going to serve Michigan out of this facility, that's certainly going to help. And the extra lot and all the things that they've said, they clearly want to cooperate and make the situation better. But um, the question is that if we put a condition that um, if, the, if the congestion of the trucks um, does not improve, uh, uh, the number of trucks sitting offsite uh, park there, even though it's not their trucks. Um, if that does not improve in 24 months from now or whatever, then then do we have the ability to come back and say then we have authority to to suspend the variance? That's I guess that's what I'm basically asking because these are external conditions. Um, certainly not a snow blizzard or something like that. But if we sh if they do all of these things and we find out that the truck congestion is still the same. 14 months from now or 24 months from now, do we have the ability to do anything with this variance? I guess that's what I'm asking. Yeah, I think you'd have great difficulty in doing uh, uh, much of anything unless it's uh, enumerated uh, in the granting of the variance. In other words, if this variance is gonna be granted, uh, you wanna add conditions to it. If they don't meet the conditions, then you have something to hang your hat on. Right. Without those conditions, without those conditions, without those representations, uh, then I, I would say you have a very difficult time uh, enforcing the variances that, that they're asking for today. So now, now I'll put this to the BZA. Uh, are there any members that want to impose conditions on this or what is the feeling of, of the board? Well, I have a question first, Stuart. Yes. If I can. So uh, Mr. Gokey, is the, the property that, that you mentioned in Lansing was that leased on a, on a short-term basis or a year-long lease? Sorry, sorry, I couldn't find my unmute button. Ma'am, we have, uh, we, we secured a lease for one year on that property with, uh, and we would look to continue that um, if needed going forward. And what about the, uh, the, the uh, moving of the um, use of the Louisville for, uh, location for serving Michigan. Is that just a short-term solution or, or long-term? No, for us, that's that's a long-term. I mean, I can't say that it will always be served out of Louisville. We wouldn't ever look at it to, to come back to Munster, but it's, you know, it, it's, it's fluid in that, you know, we don't move a territory like that on a short-term basis. We move it with the intent of um, moving it, and that's where it's going to be from. I know in the past it has been served out of Louisville before, and uh, we've moved it up to Munster and we've done these things before, but uh, at this time, there's no plan to move it back to Munster. Mr. Kelly. Yes. A question through you to Mr. Woodland. Mr. Woodland, would it be permissible to, as a condition for approving the petition to require the petitioner to submit a report on a periodic basis, such as quarterly, to this board, which would report on the condition of truck traffic on Superior Avenue and would be subsequently approved, the report would be approved or verified by the Munster Police Department. Uh, I'm sorry, uh, Dan, could you, could you repeat that for me, please? To require the petitioner to submit a report on a periodic basis, such as quarterly, to this board, reporting on the status of standing truck traffic on Superior Avenue and 
which would be verified by the Worcester Police Department. And I, I guess I think you can do that, but but uh, I guess my question is, would you be expecting the police department to enforce uh, whatever is contained in the report? And I guess that would be uh, traffic, truck traffic, right? Well, I think the, the police department would say we wrote 10 tickets during this quarter. Or we wrote 200 tickets during this quarter. Well, can I make a suggestion, um, Mr. Bucks? Uh, what, if you if you wanted to make a requirement of a submission of a report, I think you also have to say that the report has to show a reduction of a certain percentage of traffic, truck traffic, and if that is not met, then that would be considered to be a a, a, a violation of a condition that we would be imposing on this variance. I mean, we have to have some objective criteria. That they are not, they are improving the situation for, I think that's what David is basically saying for it to work. Yes. We have a baseline metric to start with. Right. Yeah. So you want to be more specific about what you want the report to state. Uh, and then we could, we could, we could then have it in a form to, to, for us to consider. You follow? Uh, Mr. Uh, Mr. Chairman, may I? Yes. Mr. Sharon, you're frozen for whatever reason. You got to, can you hear us? Can you hear me now? Yes. Okay. Um, no, what I was, what I was going to ask Mr. Goki was, I'm sure that they have a report that they probably do on a daily basis that shows how many trucks are moving daily in in their operation, correct? Yes, ma'am. So I mean that gathering that data wouldn't would not be uh Jerry, you you uh frozen again. Such is technology. <laughs> may, I, may I offer a comment for the, yes, of course. Consideration of the board? Um, while I think that it's important to hold uh, GE accountable um, for the truck traffic on Superior Avenue and within the Midwest Central Industrial Park, I'm not sure that placing the conditions on this particular variance is the best way of doing that. Uh, I just think that because a variance is a, a specific thing, we're talking about simply whether or not the expansion of the driveway and these development standards, whether or not there's a hardship in them meeting them or, or a practical difficulty, um, and whether or not the action that they're taking is going to cause additional harm. Um, the motivation for, for them doing is to, like I said, solve a problem. I don't think that it's going to make things worse. Um, I don't think that if you were to take a look at the criteria for the variances, um, I don't think anything that they're proposing tonight will, will have an adverse impact on the adjacent properties. Now, will it be, will it solve the problem? I don't know, I think it's one piece, but as I said, I don't know if holding them accountable before the Board of Zoning Appeals for these offsite impacts um, is the best way to do it, simply because they're already there, those impacts are already there. This will only have a positive effect or no effect at all. Um, so I don't, I guess I would say that we have other ways of addressing the offsite impacts, which we're pursuing um, through the police department and through the town manager's office through, um, through those means. I think that's an easier way to do it than by attaching a number of conditions to the variance because to be honest with you, the police department and the town is monitoring that situation. And it's, 
I think it's a, a more effective way of dealing with it um, than trying to have them submit a traffic report to the Board of Zoning Appeals in perpetuity um, to prove that you know that the traffic situation has not gotten worse. So if the town of Munster tickets a truck driver who's there to deliver or pick up merchandise from this facility, uh, he's motivated then to move the truck or is he just accept the ticket? Because all the testimony I've heard before in past hearings is that they just take the ticket, accept the ticket and shrug their shoulders and get back into the truck. So that's why I'm trying to figure out what, what leverage does the town of Munster have in this situation in policing it because we have a responsibility to the other business enterprises that are there and also to the hospital that is, if it's a dangerous situation. So I'm trying to understand what we can do. Right now, right before us, we have the ability to grant a variance or not grant a variance. I agree with you that if we grant a variance, hopefully it can get better. But if it gets worse, the only, the only person that's gonna be able to, to control the, the number of trucks that go there is General Electric. Stuart, 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 if I may, please. Uh, sure. I think that, and, and we've thrown this around as well, uh, and, and that is we could charge, I think, GE with, uh, if the truck traffic is, is bad uh, or worse, uh, charge them with a public nuisance. And, okay. and you, can, you can go after GE, in my opinion, uh, if it creates a public nuisance. And, and, and of course, then they have to go to court they have to face the music uh, of the judge uh, upon uh, hearing these complaints. So I, I do think that that is available. Usually uh, a nuisance fine isn't that great, but it can be in the nature of an injunct uh, injunction. So I think that, that the BZA does have some uh, ability to enforce uh, those things here by virtue of a public nuisance. Okay, that's very helpful. All right. So, so what is the pleasure of the board? So Mr. Chairman? Yes. So if the follow up on Mr. Whitworth's question, is it, so that once the variance is granted, it would not be in the hands of the board of zoning appeals anymore. That's correct. That right. It becomes responsibility of the town manager of the police department. Right. I, I would just reiterate that I don't believe that the town stands to gain in any way from a, a revocation of this variance if it was granted. I don't think that's a good remedy for if the situation continues to, if the situation continues, it doesn't help us in any way to revoke the variance. If we, I'll give you an example. If the town, if the board denied the variance today, um, because the belief was that it wasn't making a difference. I don't know if that would be an effective way of remedying the problem that is currently happening there. If that makes any sense. I think it would be, um, if GE were to withdraw the request, then it wouldn't, there would be no improvement made. And I understand, I understand your position, Tom, and I understand that, but this is the time where we can air our opinions and thoughts and see whether or not uh, we have anything to add to this idea of the variance before we actually vote on it. And so I wanted to hear all of the positive and negative implications of this. Um, are there any other members of the BCA that would like to speak on this issue? Uh, Stuart, <laughs> yes. I, I had to call in because I don't know why my Zoom app crashed. So uh, I can't I can't see anything. I'm I'm on just on my phone. Um, but anyway, when when uh, when the when the Zoom thing crashed, I was in the middle of saying that um, I'm sure that the that the company produced a report probably on a daily basis of the truck movements in and out of the out of the facility. Um, cause I think it was, um, Mr. Buxa that had said or suggested possibly a quarterly report. So from that point until now, when I joined back in again, um, I think, uh, Mr. Wicklin was saying that the town could, 
um, find the company as a public nuisance. And so what I'm wondering is if that has happened at any time in these last few years, have, has, have they ever been cited as a public nuisance? Sharon, I, I uh, don't believe so. So, so I mean, it, in in all this time, and all you know, and their and you know their neighbors calling daily, as Mr. Uh, Manta had indicated, and uh, and I think we've had other um, neighbors uh, also in other meetings um, had indicated. So, you know, they've never they've never received a, a citation for being a public nuisance. So, and I agree with what Stuart was saying is that that although maybe this isn't the the, the appropriate place. This is the time to that we can do something now um, to hopefully prevent, you know, problems in the future. I agree with Ms. Mayor's comments. And so, you know, the, the thing is whether we want to add any conditions or do anything to this variance or vote on the variance up or down. I'm welcome to hear from the board about this. Mr. Chairman? Yes. I guess another question from you to Mr. Whitland would be, does this board have the authority to make a request that either the town manager or the police department take specific action, such as issuing a nuisance citation if there are X number of trucks lined up on Superior? Yes, I think that uh, they can do that, uh, Mr. Buxa. So, Mr. Mr. Um, Chairman, would it be appropriate for the wording of, of this motion um, that that the granting of it is contingent upon um, that you know no more than a certain number? You know, I don't know what that number is. We have to determine it, but say three or four trucks are parked on you know that street at at any time would that be a, would that be a a proper wording mr wickland what do you um can we we could put this number of trucks um i don't know how many trucks are there now Stuart. i mean you, you know you'd have to explore that uh i tom how many trucks are there at any given time or how many trucks does it, does it, does it, how many trucks causes a nuisance, I guess is what I'm saying. Is it seven trucks? Is it 10 trucks? You know, I'm, I don't know the, the length of the perimeter. And so what, 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 you know, how we figure this out. Well, I, I don't, I so don't apparently they have, so with this revision in their, in their, their entry parking area, I believe they're, they're adding six spaces for trucks. And if there's say, uh, you know, 12 trucks parked on the street on a regular basis, and they can keep six, uh, you know, in this new lot, you know, do we still want six on the street also, you know, or are they going to have 12 on the street and six in the lot? So that's why I'm thinking that, you know, we need to make it a small number or zero. I mean, my inclination would be to the members of the PZA that I would say that uh, that if if it turns out that the we can make a, a condition or a comment with the variance that the variance is granted under the basis that if the outside parking of the trucks exceed five on a continuous basis, uh, then then we would anticipate the we would re we would request that the Town of Munster then fine the owner of the property or General Electric, the tenant of the property, uh, on an, as a nuisance or something to that effect. Mr. Chairman, yes, uh, I, I I want to offer an observation here. I am uncomfortable with these sorts of elaborate conditions in the variances. Um, I can recall distinctly conditions that we have imposed on other petitioners in the past. Uh, I'll, I'll name one who comes to particular mind, the Jody's ice, uh, the Jody's ice cream uh, stand there on Calumet. We impose conditions on them, on the quality of the planters 
And to this day, those planners are not what was represented to us. It is clear from the information that has emerged, there is a problem with this facility and how it manages the vehicles coming in and out. And my feeling is they need to demonstrate good citizenship, get this problem under control, and then come back to us and ask for this variance. I don't think it's our position to try and force them to do what's right by the community through a variance. A variance is a privilege, not a right. They, from what has emerged here, I have questions whether they are doing what is right uh, in terms of their responsibilities to the community. And until I feel comfortable that they are doing things that are right, I am not going to vote in favor of, of this variance, even with conditions, because I do not feel that the conditions uh, have any meaningful impact on what businesses uh, do in our community. So uh, with that being said, I'm gonna make a motion uh, to uh, continue this hearing, to give the petitioner an opportunity to consider the comments that are being made and return to us with a demonstration that they are capable of managing their facility in such a way that it does not cause problems for the town of Munster. Is there a second to the motion? Uh, Mr. Wicklin, am I entitled to second a motion or no? Because I'm acting as chairman. I think you can pass the gavel uh, and make a motion. You have to pass the gavel to uh, the vice president. Who's the vice president? Tom? Pass the gavel to, to, to uh, Dan. Uh, Maybe, well, I would Go before ahead. you make it that, before you do that, yes, um, Sharon. I would like to. I would like to see a visual of the report that we were talking about. I would like to see the. You know, if we're going to continue this till next month, then I want to see a report that shows. You know, every day for the next thirty days, how many trucks moved in and out of that place, whether or not they are making improvements. Mr. Chairman? Yes. I'll amend my motion to continue the hearing. Uh, we will continue the hearing for 30 days and we further request that the petitioner provide a report consistent with what Ms. Mayor has requested. I think that's reasonable. Is there a second to that motion or do I have to pass the gavel? No, I'll second that. Okay. All right, then let's vote on the motion. Um, Tom, would you call the roll? Uh, Sharon Mayer? Yes. Jonathan Peterson? Yes. Daniel Butzu? Yes. And President Friedman? Yes. All right. So the, it is continued for 30 days. Uh, General Electric will present us a report and we'll go from there. Very good. All right. The next item on the agenda is findings of fact. I believe that's the next item, Mr. Wicklin, in connection with um, the Humane Society. Am correct. I correct? Yes. Mr. Chairman. Yes. Make a motion to approve the findings of fact as presented. Is there a second to that motion? Chairman, I second that motion. Okay, Tom, a call for the vote. Chair and Mayor. Yes. Jonathan Peterson. Yes. Daniel Buckton. Yes. And President Friedman. Yes. All right. The motion to approve the findings and facts are done. Uh, do we have any additional items for discussion? None from the staff. Any, uh, none from the BZA as well? Okay. Mr. Chairman, I make a motion to adjourn. Okay. Is there a second? Or all, all those in favor say aye. 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 I can call the motion, the meeting to an end. Thank you all. Thank you, everyone. Good night. Thank, Good night. thank Good night. you. Bye bye. Bye bye. Is there a separate plan commission meeting or is that it? No, there's a separate planning commission subsequent to this now. There's a separate planning commission. It's on the same. Okay, deal. gotcha. I just want to make sure I didn't sign off.
thank you all who were here. <clears throat> hey, Tom, let me know when we can go. Okay, let me, let me see. Go yeah. freshen up, will you? <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm fine. Uh, floor is dry. Okay, it looks like we do have uh, uh, a forum of planning commissioners here on Zoom, Bill. Um, and it's 736, so you can start the meeting whenever you're ready. Ready, let's go. So I'm going to call this meeting of the Munster Planning Commission to order. Uh, please silence your phone, dog, the game, everything else, and let's stand for the Pledge of Allegiance, please. <clears throat> I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Crowd goes wild. All right, Tom, uh, roll call, please. Present. Um, okay, hold on a second. We got all that. Councilman Gardner is. Uh, Councilor Chibowitzki? Present. Stuart Friedman? Present. Uh, Roland Raffin is absent. Uh, Brian Specht? Present. Councilor Gardner? Present. And Chairman Baker? <clears throat> Present. All right, next up is the approval of the minutes from January. Any uh, corrections, modifications, motions? What say you? Uh, Mr. President, Mr. Chairman, I read the minutes and I find them to be in order, so I would make a motion for them to be accepted. There's a motion. Is there a second? I'll second the motion. And there's a second. Any discussion? Be there none. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? They're out there forever. Next up is the preliminary hearing. Be there none. Next is the public hearing. Uh, Mr. Vanderwood, should I read this, or how are we handling this moving forward, please? Uh, you can you can read the agenda item. Yeah. So next up on the agenda is PC 20-008 B Corps, Corridor Chicago LLC, represented by Kinley Corn, requesting approval of a development plan to expand the driveway, alter a parking lot, install landscaping and screening at a GE appliance distribution center at 475 Superior Avenue. Mr. Vanderwood. Yeah, thank you. This is a proposal as you read to uh, modify the driveway at the, at the GE Appliance Distribution Center at 475 Superior Avenue. Um, the project is seeking to uh, receive six variances in order to do this pro in order to do the project. Uh, because they are making some substantial improvements to the site, including modifications of the driveway in the parking lot and the installation of landscaping. It also requires uh, the approval by the planning commission of the development plan. There are a handful of standards that are applicable in this situation. Um, those are uh, specifically the landscaping and screening um, standards. So they have met all those standards. However, um, the Board of Zoning Appeals has tabled the request for the variances. So until those variances are granted, um, the project does not comply with our zoning code and therefore my recommendation is to um, not take action on, on the project or on the application tonight and to uh, table it until the Board of Zoning Appeals either grants the variances, in which case I would recommend approval of the development plan or denies the variances, in which case I would recommend denial. But as I said, that action has not taken place yet. So I would recommend that the board um, take, take public comment if they desire um, and then uh, table it till next month. Um, I understand. So this is a continued public hearing. So um, with what you had outlined for us, thank you very much. We still have to provide an opportunity for the public to speak on this matter? Yes. Okay, so be it. Is there somebody that's willing or from the um, public?
public that's willing to have a conversation as it relates to this location and this particular petition? Uh, Going once. Th there is, no, there is. I don't know if I need to speak again. I spoke during the BZA meeting and I don't know if I need to say the same thing again. Uh, yes, sir. It's a, con it's a completely different group, even though we got to hear it. So maybe an executive summary will be helpful. Okay. Uh, my name is John Manta. I'm uh, with BMWC Constructors at 420 Superior Avenue, uh, vice president of the company. It's uh, across the street from GE's location. We are very thankful the town of Munster is concerned about the situation. So we say thank you for that. We're very thankful the Munster Police Department has been helpful in monitoring the traffic as best as they can and responding to our almost daily phone calls to minimize the, the dangerous truck traffic zipping up and down Superior. Um, we've had our flagpole uh, destroyed and not reimbursed. We've been considering putting up a gate to keep the truck drivers off of our property. Uh, we're concerned about the the oil spots on the street that have not been cleaned up. Um, we respect GE as a, as a neighbor and we want to work together with them. So we hope uh, everything can go well. We just want to minimize the truck traffic and make sure that people coming out of the hospital who are not there very often, typically, those people going to the hospital, they're just for that situation and they're not familiar with the truck traffic as some of we are, as we are. Um, we're worried about the overnight traffic, the overnight parking. and um, and we would just like to minimize, you know, minimize the danger of all those trucks uh, coming up and down at all hours of the day. And we work shift work as well. So if you move traffic to different parts of the day, uh, there are times we cannot even get into our parking lot. So appreciate you hearing us out. And uh, I appreciate what the BZA decision they made earlier tonight. Hey, Mr. Vanderwood, is there anybody else from the public that wishes to speak on this matter? I don't see anyone indicating that they're unable to speak. So I'm, I'm not seeing anyone on the line. Okay. Going once, going twice. All right, I'm gonna close the public hearing and bring it back to the board. What say you? Mr. Chairman, uh, due to the board of uh, BZA's uh, continuance of this matter, I would also make a motion to the plan committee that we uh, uh, make a motion to continue this hearing until next uh, meeting. I I'll second. second. Okay. All right, there's a motion and, and a second uh, discussion. Anyone? So I have one question, Mr. Wicklund, how many times can we actually you know, continue the same subject matter? I don't believe the uh, new zoning ordinance speaks to it, does it, Tom? No, I mean, I, I think you would continue it as long as you felt it was necessary to deliberate. Um, and this is a unique situation because, as I said in the report, you can't really approve it because it doesn't comply with the zoning until it's received its variances. So, I mean. Uh, no, and I understand. I mean, but there's no way for us to approve something with a contingency. Oh, of course. Of course you can. Okay. You, you can also deny it, and then they can't come back for, I believe it's a year under the new ordinance. Right, because, you know, the parking issue, I don't know if it's going to be resolved by this, but at least it's trying, and we're not getting to that point. So, um, chicken and the egg, in my opinion. But yep. um, I'll bring it to the board, so. You know, I would just say that, yeah, I mean, you do, you raise a good point. You could approve it conditioned upon receipt of the variances. One way to deal with it and be similar to the way that you dealt with uh, the 407 411 Ridge Road preliminary plat, which was okay. last month contingent upon the approval of the development plan. All right, but Julie, in, no, all, in all reality, we, we need to have the BZA approve something, and we have this meeting the same night, so there's no, there's no urgency for us to approve something contingent upon the BZA unless they approve it first, correct? Correct. All right. Understood. Thank you. All right. There's a motion and a second. Um, any other discussion? Uh, hold on. I'm trying to figure out how to scroll through. Be there none. Uh, roll call vote. Mr. Vanderwood. Councilor Mellon. Yes. Yes. Councilor Gardner. Yes. Councilor Chulewitzki. Yes. Stuart Friedman. 
Yes. Brian Speck. Yes. Chairman Baker. Yes. Okay, folks. See you next time. Next up is PC 20-009, Guy Costanza, GM Contracting, requesting approval of a development plan for the commercial development at 407-411 Ridge Road. Mr. Vanderwood, I feel like I'm at Groundhog Day. Uh, <laughs> Amen to that, Chairman Baker. Yeah. Uh, this, uh, so uh, Guy Costanza um, and GM Contracting, uh, is requesting to consolidate two lots at 407 411 Ridge Road and construct a 2,500 square foot commercial building. Last month, the board granted preliminary plat approval to consolidate the lots contingent upon the approval of the development plan. Um, in my report last month, I identified a number of ways that the project and the, the plans needed to be revised to comply with our new standards. Uh, I did receive revised plans uh, earlier this month, but they did not comply fully with um, with standards. So they they haven't provided all the materials or compliant materials yet for the board to review. Um, I. Received correspondence today from John Reed, the attorney for the developer, who I thought would have been on the Zoom, but I don't see him here, um, indicating that they too would just be requesting a continuance on this project as well so that they can um, coordinate their various designers to come up with a plan that would be acceptable to the planning commission. So the, the recommendation from me would be to table this one as well. Got it. All right, thank you. Is this, this is also a continued public hearing. Is there anybody from the public that would like to speak about this very highly visible parcel on Ridge Road? Bill, I don't see anybody uh, on Zoom other than the members of the board. 10-4, so um, I'll close the public hearing, bring it back to the board, what say you? I would make a motion, Mr. Chairman, that we table PC docket number 20-009. There's second. a motion. Is there a second? I'll, I'll second. second that. Or no, go ahead. And a second. <laughs> that one's for Stuart. No problem. And, 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 any discussion? Be there or not, Mr. Vanderwood. Councilor Mellon? Yes. Councilor Gardner? Yes. Councilor Tubowitzki? Yes. Stuart Friedman? Yes. Brian Specht? Yes. Chairman Baker? Yes. All right, moving right along. Findings of fact, PC 20-011. Guy Costanza, GM contractor requesting approval of preliminary plat for a one lot commercial subdivision at 407-411 Ridge Road. Findings of fact, Mr. Vanderwood, do you have to do an introduction or can we just put this to a motion? I'll just say that uh, it's a fairly standard set of findings of fact. The only unique thing about it is that it does include that condition that I mentioned earlier that it was granted uh, on the condition that the development plan be approved. Understood. Be that said, I'll bring it back to the board. What say you? This is where we make a motion to approve. Mr. Chairman, I would make a motion that we uh, approve the finding of facts for PC docket 20-011. There's a motion to approve. Is there a second? I will second that. And there's a second. Any discussion? Be there none, Mr. Vanderwood. Councilor Mellon. Yes. Councilor Gardner. Yes. Councillor Tulowitzki. Yes. Stuart Friedman. Yes. Brian Specht. Yes. And Chairman Baker. Absolutely. All right. Next up is the other business additional items. Is there anything for the good of the order? Mr. Vanderwood, usually you have something. There is nothing from the staff tonight. Excellent. What about Commissioner Speck? Do you want to say something to continue the meeting? 
<laughs> You're muted, man. Oh, it was funny. Though. I make I make a motion we adjourn. Uh, I thought Councillor Gardner was. No, I'm right. fine. I'm I'm fine. All right, I'm going back to Council Commissioner Speck with his motion to adjourn. Is there a second? I'll second that. <laughs> All right. Actually, we have a motion and a second. All those in favor, say aye. 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 All right, thanks folks. Next meeting is uh, March 9th at 7.30. Uh, maybe we'll have the opportunity to get together again. So appreciate you helping making Munster a better place to live. Y'all be safe. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Good night. Good night. Good night, Mr. Chairman. <laughs> <laughs>